All right, last week I know I said that in this episode we we're going to be covering our third day of sea trials, which included raising the spinnaker and sailing it, and then going under the electric engines. But due to this big announcement we have and Matt wanting to go over all of the details, it took up a little bit more time than I thought. So we're just gonna bump that to next week, finish up our Vietnam there, but hopefully you enjoy what we have in store for you now. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. It's not easy being a peasant. Ever since Jessica became a proper lady, she treats us commoners like garbage. This is my home now. It stinks, and I stink, like the filth I am. We would like to thank Established Titles for sponsoring this portion of the video. I'm done settling for being normal. I want to be noble or royal, but I can't. What I can do, though, is become a certified lady by purchasing one square foot of land in Scotland. And by becoming a landowner, I now fall into an old Scottish custom where landowners were referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in our American English. So if you want to be abnormal like me, make yourself a lord or lady today and make sure to hold it over all the people around you. We refer to them as normies. And with every order, a tree will be planted through charities such as Trees for the Future or One Tree Planted to combat afforestation across the globe. After spending three months sailing in Scotland and seeing all the natural beauty surrounding us, we want to keep future generations experiencing the same splendor we have. I'm told that the first 200 purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. I tell you. She has me doing the worst things now that she's a lady. Sweeping the sand before she walks across it. It's sand. Spoiled is what she is. Spoiled and all high and mighty. Make sure to check out our link in the description box below and use the code MJSAILING for an additional 10% off their already massive sales going on. Good night, peasant. Good night, you prissy c Well, as you can tell, we are back at Kentmore Marina because this kind of brownish water behind us is not the Saigon River. It is the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> we love you, Chesapeake Bay. We love Bay. you, Chesapeake. You are now home, <laughs> uh, which means our trip in Vietnam is over. We had so much fun. It was kind of a short one. I think we were in town for five days this yep. time, yep. which means that we did get to do a number of test sales. We got to test out a few things with the uh, parallel hybrid engines, like the running it as a generator, yep. and then just running the electric engines themselves. But because Graham uh, from Hybrid Marine got there after us and was staying longer than us, there was a few tests that we did miss out on because we already flew back, but we're gonna cover those now. Yeah, well, the important one is regen, regeneration, which I think a lot of people had questions about as to how that works, um, the amount of power that you can draw from that. Uh, they did an absolute ton of tests. I think they test something like 13 or 12 different props to figure out which one would work the best. Um, they did it by towing the boat, so they were able to keep a constant speed on it, which was kind of the important thing to make sure that they're getting accurate information. They tested it multiple different directions each pass to verify and um, uh, kind of average out those results well. So I think they got probably the best information that they could get on that um, um, as it stands. And so we'll relay that information to you in just a little bit. Um, we did also want to discuss, I know there's a lot of questions, um, a lot of comments in the last video on the hybrid system, discussing the complexity of the system or, or bringing or mentioning that. And that, it must be on me um, because I'm, 
probably didn't explain it real well because in my view, this is a far less complex system than what you get with a serial hybrid setup. So just going into that, basically, just as a reminder, these are com two completely independent systems. So you can run just diesel if you want to and ignore the fact that you have electric motors on there. You can run just electric motors and ignore that you have a diesel sitting there. So again, completely independent of each other. Um, as opposed to a serial hybrid, where the serial hybrid requires that gen set um, to run. Of course, if you have a large battery bank, but you need a way to charge that battery bank. And anybody that has lived off of solar for a while understands that there are some limitations with solar. It's not going to be foolproof. They're not gonna always have power. Um, so you need a way to be able to generate that power and something that you do if you need to be able to take this boat from place to place to place. Um, if you're marina hopping, you can plug in. If you are uh, going back to the same marina and you can plug in every single night or just taking short jumps, then great. But as a world cruising boat, you really need a way to be able to charge that battery bank. So with a serial hybrid, it requires a fairly large gen set to make that really work out um, to be able to power that. And we're talking for what usually is recommended if you have two 10 kilowatt electric motors in the halls, usually uh, recommended is 12 to 15 kilowatt gen set then with a still a fairly large battery bank. What that does, it's a pretty heavy system um, a pretty heavy diesel motor is necessary to be able to do that in a very large gen set head to generate that kind of power. Um, there are options to do a 48 volt DC now. A few companies have that out. So that eliminates the charger that's necessary for it. With an AC driven gen set, you need a way to be able to convert that over to DC. So it ends up going through a charger and then into the battery bank. Well, now you're adding another complexity to the system of that charger that needs to work all the time. Otherwise, you don't have a way of powering the boat. Um, so with this setup, you eliminate that factor. The electric motor acts as both the gen set head and the drive motor. So you get that redundancy in there. You get that setup where it's utilized in two different ways to charge the battery bank and to propel the boat forward. So that's a little bit of simplicity. The fact it is 48 volt uh, DC means that you do not need a separate charger um, that again could fail at any point. So you would, it, personally, I would want at least redundancy. So I'd want to have two of those just in case. So for a world cruising boat, I believe this is a simpler system because you have that redundancy of a full diesel propulsion system that can, if the electrical system were to completely fail, you can still motor, you still have that capability. Max Cruise is offering multiple different packages for the hybrid. The one that you saw were two hybrid motors, so two diesel engines, um, two electric motors, which act as a generator and for propulsion as well. Probably half of them now, I think it's five or six hulls, have chosen a little bit different route. They have gone with the hybrid in one hull, and then over in the starboard hull, the owner side, they've gone with just an electric motor. So what that does is that brings that complexity down one, one step, and it now parallels with a serial hybrid setup, which you have a gen set, a diesel generator, diesel motor for the this parallel hybrid setup. You have the gen set head in there. This, it's using, again, that same electric motor that is at, uh, used for propulsion, is also used for generation as well. And you're able to send power as needed over to the starboard hull, either through the battery pack or through that electric motor that we were talking about, that gen set um, type of setup. One of the reasons why I think it's such a good option is because it changes the weight characteristics. These diesel motors are fairly heavy. The hybrid system ends up adding about 150 pounds to our Yanmar that we have. So now, you're saving uh, 350 pounds of, of diesel by not having that in the starboard hull, which is huge. That 
actually equates to 20 kilowatts of battery. So what that, that allows you to do then is put that full battery pack over into the starboard hull and balance the boat out. So now we have same side to side and we're losing that house bank, the weight that would be normally a little bit further forward, but that still is weight that now is going into the house slash propulsion bank. Now onto our boat. So we, again, started this build back in, well, planning for it in 2020. And as soon as we found our build site here in Maryland, we kind of started pricing things out. We originally had planned for outboard engines, kind of quickly decided that wasn't gonna be the route. Yeah. And even though we wanted to go to diesel, we knew that getting two brand new diesel engines would be fairly pricey. So right away, Matt started looking at Facebook Marketplace. And not too long after searching, he found an Antares catamaran that was going from dual diesel engines to full electric. And the guy put those diesel engines up for sale, really cheap, $7,000 for the both of them. So yep. even though we didn't know exactly what route we wanted to take in the future, we figured better to have our hands on these while we have the opportunity than to completely miss it in case this is what we end up doing. So we rented a truck, drove all the way up to Maine in the middle of winter, picked up a set of diesel Yanmar well engines. Well worth the drive. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And then we stored those in the tent where they have been sitting ever since. So of course, going electric hybrid had always been a dream of ours from the beginning. It oh, just yeah. wasn't in the cards. It wasn't in the budget. Budget, budget, budget yeah. is, is exactly the reason why. We may we be were. building a catamaran, but it's like the lowest budget we can yes. do. So while we were in Vietnam on the second visit, Terry <laughs> kept trying to push us towards this electric hybrid system every time like we were driving out to the yard or out to the uh, test sale site and we're kind of like you know terry that sounds great but we, we just not we can't this. afford it yeah. you know like yeah. we can't afford to get brand new diesel engines yeah. and for this hybrid system but gosh darn it terry likes a challenge and he likes to solve problems so max cruz is now working with us to develop an electric hybrid system using one of the yanmar engines that we already own which means we are going electric hybrid now <laughs> Which is so amazing. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much to Max Cruz because yeah. of course this was our dream. We just never thought it was attainable. Never thought it was possible. And the reason why they're they're doing this is the Yanmar, um, where the, the ones that aren't common rail stop basically at 30 horsepower or, or 29 horsepower. It's the 3YM um, 30AE, which is what we have two of. Um, the reason why they're looking into it is because it's uh, 40, 50 pounds lighter than what the Beta is, or Beta. Um, <laughs> so it is an option to help balance the boat to lower the weight. And again, this is a performance cruising boat. Weight matters, as you may have seen in every single one of our episodes where we're trying to shave off every little gram ounce that we possibly can, and 50 is a big amount. So this is a good option for it. Um, Yanmar, they're, they're great motors. You can get parts everywhere, obviously, around the world. Um, some people, they know it. It just seems like a natural for this hybrid system. And if we can do anything on that to shave off a little bit of weight, the better. So what are we going to do for this? Um, basically, the motor controller, the electric motors themselves, all that kind of stuff is direct carryover. That is independent of that drivetrain system, so that really doesn't matter. The big thing is going to be the mounting structure for it and how that gearbox is going to interface with the Yanmar. So that is what we're going to be working on is to, to develop that setup and basically get this properly placed within the boat. Um, trying to figure that out, trying to figure out the weight uh, distribution, so on and so forth. So that is going to be the important part of working towards having this system available for the Yanmar um, if you order it through Max Cruise. So it is just very, very exciting and very, very lucky that that yes. happens to be what we have sitting in the tent right now. <laughs> <laughs> and by going this route, it opens up a whole new world to us as oh we're cruising. Gosh, yeah. So yeah. many options, which one of them that we're really excited about, again, Matt was saying the performance. So we're hoping if we're lucky, averaging speeds of eight to nine knots at least, which means we can then use the regen system too. Yeah, so to generate power while we're under sail. Yep, so developing and, and using a ton of that power, because again, what the, the system that we'd be looking at is one diesel, 
with the electric motor attached to it, the hybrid system in one side, and then the other side will be just an electric motor. So we do have that function that we're doing regeneration from both sides to generate a lot of our power, but it does also give us the excuse to add as much solar as we possibly <laughs> can on this boat. So we, we are obviously going to be optimizing that as much as possible. And going from a 10 kilowatt hour bank to a 20 is the route that we're gonna go because that will balance everything out really, really well. Uh, so we're really excited about going that because that of course is going to change our lifestyle aboard. All of a sudden that electric galley that we're doing is going to be fully functional and fully usable. Because I we'll can use three burners instead yes. of two, which three is gonna be huge for night when I cook dinner. convection oven exactly. running at the same time. We can have all of these things going. It is a, a, just an absolute game changer for the comfort aboard the boat as well. And then of course we have the Yanmar, which is gonna be acting as a five kilowatt uh, gen set as well. So be able to charge those banks when we are in cloudy conditions or bad weather, that kind of stuff, or up north again <laughs> um, in winter. So it, it does just give us a huge possibility with this. And it's cool technology. It's one of those things that I love playing with, um, trying to optimize this yeah, system and so get the most we possibly can out of it. So that is what we're really excited about is just being able to play with this and utilize the system hopefully to its fullest. Once again, I wanna say a huge thank you to Terry and Nancy over at Max Cruise for this amazingly generous gift of the hybrid system. It is something that the two of us have been dreaming of ever since we started planning this boat, but to actually have it become a reality, our minds are just blown and I don't think that we've like fully accepted it yet. So we cannot wait for the installation of it. We can't wait till we can get on the water and test sail it. So thank you two again so much. And now we're gonna go back over to Matt who's gonna let you know all about the regen system that they were testing back in Vietnam. Now that I'm in my newscaster pose, let's talk about regen. Kind of a big thing, and that was the, the test that they had done for almost a week back and forth in the Saigon River, testing these different things out, trying to figure out what was gonna be the best prop for it, trying to figure out what kind of numbers they're realistically seeing. And we do have this little handy graph that we're gonna show because everything was averaged out. This chart shows both the single motor and dual motor regen numbers. And what regeneration is, is think of it kind of like a water wheel. The flow of water going past the hull is spinning the propeller and that propeller is attached to the electric motor, which is then generating power for us. So it's using, when we're sailing along doing great speeds, we can engage regeneration. So it is adding power back to that battery bank. So in those good sailing days or good sailing time, because a lot of times during a 24 hour period of cruising, you'll have this area where you're not in a ton of wind, you're going slow, you can engage the electric motors, power the boat, go further forward, make some miles with that. Instead of having to run the diesel, we can do electric propulsion with that. Well, we need a way to charge that. And this is a great way when we are sailing along to engage the regeneration, have that, that water that's already flowing past the hulls because we're sailing so well, which is in turn turning the electric motor, which is generating power for us. So it's a great option. What you can see here is it's really, the numbers that you get is really dependent on speed. So that's the benefit you have by putting these into a performance catamaran is this is a boat that's capable of high speeds and sustained high speeds. And looking at it, you can see that with the dual motors engaged, we are getting close to that 1500 watts of power that's, that's coming in. That is huge over the course of a 20 hour period or 15 hour period. We're generating a ton of power that can then propel us forward or we can use that of course on board. The way that they've done this is they've tested out both folding and feathering props to see which one was gonna be the best option for it. Really what they found is they were doing much, much better with a feathering prop setup and one in particular that they're doing um, really well with. We'll discuss that at a later time when we're talking about prop selection, but uh, the numbers are so incredibly impressive. And the big thing too is when you're sailing at a high speed like this, you really, the drag 
isn't as important because you have ample amount of power. It matters a lot more when you're at light wind than every little bit of drag is very, very important. So by engaging these, we're not losing a ton of speed. Realistically, half a knot is what we expect to lose with this. And that was kind of proven out with these testing as well when they engage it or allow the props to actually feather like they normally would for us, the big thing is the second part of this chart. And this is how that system is going to work when you have a hybrid in one hull and you have an electric motor in the other hull. The diesel engine is a separate system. So that can be used to propel the boat forward. Normally when you're sitting with a diesel and you're at low RPMs, it's a very inefficient mode. It's um, something that unfortunately we had to do quite often on elements because we had to run the alternator to, to generate power when we were up north because our solar couldn't keep up with our, our needs at all. The problem is, is when you're at a low RPM, you're not using much power and there isn't much load actually on the engine itself. Diesels like load, and when you're running at a low RPM, you're not running hot. So what this system does is it will send power through uh, the diesel motor into the propeller, and that can power us forward. And then what it does is it adds load by turning on the electric motor as a gen set, so as a generator, and that's generating power, adding load to the prop shaft, which the makes the diesel happier because if it's running at 1400 RPM, um, which is what this example shows, running at 1400 RPM, it's really not much load on that if you're running it just to propel the boat forward. So now we add five kilowatts of gen set load on that uh, prop shaft and through the diesel motor, which brings it into a much more efficient point. And what we do is we take that five kilowatts that's being generated and supply that to the starboard electric motor. So now all of a sudden that's propelling us forward. This is the number that, that absolutely blows my mind is running that hybrid at 1400 RPM, which is very, very low. Using that to propel the boat forward and as a generator, sending five kilowatts to the electric motor on the other side makes the boat do 6.1 knots through the water. Absolutely unbelievable that we're able to obtain that. So we're staying very, very efficient using extremely, extremely low amounts of fuel to do this. And we're not taking anything from the battery bank to power this. This is just a net zero basically position. If we need more power for those types of times when we are going fighting tides or dusk is setting and we wanna make sure we get into that harbor ASAP, we can use up to 10 kilowatts again in the electric motor on the starboard side, which means we can take some power out of the battery bank to move us forward and put that throttle up on the diesel on the port side and then get all that extra power to get us into wherever we need to. That is amazing, ultimate goal. So that's how this is possible for this type of boat to be able to have just a, a 29 horsepower diesel in there and still propel us forward without using extra power. Now under just electric, that's what this chart is showing. So this is when the diesel's turned off and we are taking power out of the battery bank or solar or whatnot. Uh, the sweet spot for this is 3.7 knots. So at 3.7 knots through the water speed, we're using two kilowatts of power. We'll be able to do that in theory with solar uh, alone without again, taking power from the battery bank. That's the benefit we get again with these performance, with these very, very narrow hulls, a very lightweight build is the fact that we can on these very calm days, something like it is out right now, um, if we're not able to sail, we would be able to motor again, close to four knots without taking anything out of the battery bank, which is again, absolutely awesome and huge that they're able to, to pull this off. If we want to use more power, so if we're sitting there and we've got a full battery bank and we know it's a fairly short run that we're going, as you can see from the chart, we can use more power. Now this is limited to five kilowatts from either side. So this is 10 kilowatts total that you're seeing roughly there. Reason for that is these are still breaking in. This was the break-in period for the electric motors for the system. And what Hybrid Marine likes to do is they like to eventually ramp it up. So uh, these numbers will get higher eventually, but this is basically, if you're looking at it, would be the equivalent of using one motor in one hull 
to propel us forward. Um, right now it's split between the two, but they're using less power. So it maxes out basically at a lower amount. But uh, that's the way to read the chart. Max on the chart is showing 180 amp draw on this system. Now this is again running through these two electric motors. You could turn one off and just do it through one. Uh, but with that, that equates to 8,400 watts roughly. So not even using those full 10 kilowatts of an electric motor and we're still doing 5.5 knots. This chart is based off day one's data. They did multiple days after this where they did ramp it up, where they were using um, the full 10 kilowatts out of both motors to get speed, to basically see how much of a hole it's digging in there because this is so much work, so much power through it. As you see from this curve, you really aren't going that much faster for using more power. This type of power is just necessary for those dangerous type situations or when you really, really, really need to get somewhere in a short distance. Great setup, but remember, this still has that diesel propulsion in it as well. So instead of having to drain down the bank, they are able to power that from one hull and this full 10 kilowatts from the other side, which is basically the same as having two fairly large diesel engines in there. So this is a, just an unbelievable setup. I think when performance is important, it does make sense to go with that single hybrid in one hull, electric motor in the other, increase the battery bank that you would have from a normal um, house bank. And when you do all of that uh, together, we end up weighing just about the same as we would if we were just the two diesels in here awesome system and we cannot wait to get it. Because of the development, we are looking at, we're gonna start developing this around the first of the year going through, um, they're pretty busy installing hybrids in the current builds that they have going on right now. Realistically, you know, around late spring of next year, we should be able to install the system. And so a big, big shout out to Nancy and Terry from Max Cruise, you guys are incredible we cannot believe how generous you guys are with your time with resources with everything and uh you guys are amazing that was one of the big reasons that we chose max cruise we love the boat of course but even before we signed on the dotted line the relationship there with uh the designer the builder with the company it was incredible so we cannot thank them enough and we are extremely extremely excited can't wait to get the system started, installed, and be able to test it out fully.